Hello. Uh, yeah, this is a quick test. Uh, I've gotten requests to do more of a voiceover when I'm doing my sketches, and I'm actually checking out a new microphone to use as well. So um, I'm not sure how well this will go. I because when I'm drawing and then I'm trying to talk, it's like another part of my brain's working, and it's not totally concentrated on the shapes I'm trying to make but I'll give it my best shot to see how it goes here. Um, right here, you can see I'm using pure ref. Uh, sometimes I don't use any reference, sometimes I just draw, and then sometimes I use some inspiration, such as whatever I find. And uh, I just picked these two random pictures, um, basically just for this little test this morning, and to show that uh, I recommend that younger uh, students and you know more not so experienced, um, educated artists do use references. And, uh, yeah, so I just picked this one. I like the guy sitting up here, or the guy or girl, I don't know, um, sitting on the boat. And I think there's some shapes there that I could try to discuss exactly how I break these down. Um, so I'm just going to put this to the side over here, and then I will just try to sketch here. Actually, I should make it, I'll probably make it much smaller. Um, so you really just see the almost like a thumbnail and you're squinting your eyes and then you see the real basic blurry shapes. I don't normally do this but it's just a good practice uh, um, when you're still when you're trying to uh, learn or figure it out. Uh, these the brushes I usually use most of my own um, made brushes which you can find in most of the links on any of my profiles across Instagram or YouTube. But uh, yeah, let's get started here. Uh, so first things first, I think um, I usually, especially with characters, to establish their location or what I'm doing, I always usually start with some sort of head. Uh, the reason why I think it's just kind of the root uh, and establishes um, kind of like where the balance and the formation of the drawing will start however with this you could literally start here you could start where this this broad shape is or this shape I think you could do that because they're so um, they, they the, the ones when you squint they really stand out this kind of uh, like uh, a or H shape However, I still would start with the head, uh, almost probably out of habit, and I do recommend that you do that. Also, I use, uh, like I tell people, I use both the Cintiq and a Wacom. It just depends on what I'm doing. I find it easier to use the warp tool, and uh, which I don't use too often, but um, any sort of photo stuff I use, and like a lot of painting, I'll go back to the Wacom tablet. But when I'm doing real sketchy stuff like this, I prefer to use my muscle memory from like the, the way I was taught um, traditionally. It's easier for me on the Cintiq. So yeah, I, I would start with the head here. Now I'm going to play with these shapes as well. Like I just like the structure and then the conceptual part. I know I'm not just probably going to draw a, 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 a diver. I think I'll definitely try to add, you know, my fun, you know, imaginative, like uh, sci-fi elements or, you know, even if I decide to make it fantasy or contemporary or something. Um, I just kind of, I don't establish that right away from the beginning of the drawing. I just kind of let it see where um, the shapes and the inspiration kind of take me. So when I said I started with the head, right here you notice that I'm basically starting with the mask. And then I've learned how to use these brushes um, over just practice that I can tell when I'm going to go from a thick line to, you know, here to a thick line. And then I know I'm going to have this broad shape, which makes my drawing quicker because I'm already establishing like the shadow of uh, below his jawline. And so, yeah, that's where you can see I'm using these broad strokes. 
and then I look basically on the image on the reference I'll look for the other spots and I kind of draw with negative and positive shapes I don't uh, sometimes I'll do the thing if I know I need to be very precise I'll really sketch in exactly um, kind of proportions but then other parts I just kind of figure out that I can like you know I can fix things later and then I can just have fun with uh, you know whatever kind of strikes my imagination as far as like I just made that stroke here and you can tell that's the side of his arm and I'm not following the exact proportions I'm kind of pushing and pulling things because this is my drawing and it kind of helps me uh, helps I think artists as well to the tools that they're using to establish and help uh, discover a style and then here you know I'm, I'm seeing here like I know the shoulders here and it comes down here but I don't need to draw that I can just imagine it in my head that I know the hand is here and I can just kind of play with this hand exactly like what I wanted to be doing this one's a little bit different because I can already tell that I need to uh, probably erase away and I like to use I use the round brush sometimes but then sometimes I just like to use the angle brush that I have because it does bring out like the cooler shapes more dynamic and uh, stronger edges or how about this not stronger edges uh, descriptive and the cool thing is here is that <clears throat> You know, when you're drawing this way, you have to remember, like, uh, us as humans. I think somebody asked me, and the one thing is, um, human beings, we don't see things in lines. Like, you look out in the world and you look around you, you're not seeing lines and outlines of stuff. What you are seeing, you're seeing basic shapes first, and then you, in milliseconds, you're describing whatever's coming afterwards. So, such as the volume and the, and the, the values bring the form together so when I'm drawing I basically am just kind of going with my first instincts of when you see something you block you're blocking you draw in shapes you see in shapes you don't see in lines basically so that's um, something I always just try to I guess remind people of when they are sketching but of course with concept like you know later you do have to go into the actual like <clears throat> each uh, each element and that's when the line drawings really you know become helpful and there you see I'm just basically I just drew his leg with one stroke and then hit like his knee comes down and the same with his knees over here somewhere which I'm just drawing the <clears throat> his uh, left side and then we'll probably go into the big techie the fins which I changed obviously I'm changing my brush size to Get the best now here he's holding something right and this is going to give basically like a foundation um, I don't know the right word I'm trying to think of what what I'm thinking about it but it's going to give it a bit of a structure so I'll just do that across and so that will be my structure foundation and I already erased that hand because it kind of didn't fit once I put in the leg so this is where I'll put the hand in and the hand will actually have a little bit more purpose in whatever it's doing and it's rooted on this whatever this structure might end up becoming
And now I just got an idea to maybe play with the black and whites. Um, so, like I said, I'm not, I don't come in with a total plan of exactly I'm doing this. I kind of see where the drawing takes me and where the ideas are taking me. Oh, sorry, I guess where the ideas come. Uh, what am I trying to, <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> draw and think about this at the same time. But I, I, I kind of let the, so I kind of follow um, where my instincts or my creativity wants to take this drawing. However, I'm still trying to stick with the established reference points, etc., etc. So if I was actually given a brief and it's like, hey, we need a diver that's, you know, from the you know late 1800s, I would still do this process, but I would make sure that I have multiple other elements that would give the visual cues to you know the viewer that this diver what does take place in that period um, that's just an example I'm not doing that I just So now, since I've got the basics of everything, you know, the structure's in there, you kind of know exactly where the stuff is. Um, the root and the very basic parts of uh, the, the figure are established. So this is where I think I would start coming back in and maybe erasing away and establishing, uh, like, I don't know, some cooler ideas. Just right here, I want to establish the head angle that he's looking at. And I'm just going to play with the uh, make the shape of his. like asymmetry like maybe this suit attaches this way I think what I want to do now I actually enjoy using this brush a lot it's like my marker brush so I always feel it gets a really cool effect His arm looks weird. Okay, so I'm gonna erase that arm. Uh, I think now, I think I'm gonna come back here and establish his shoulder again. Maybe 
maybe his arm could be hanging down. He just feels a little sloppy. Whoops, that goes my reference. Uh, I had to stop the recording to just check and see that the audio levels and all that stuff was working, so I'm um, just restart this. Uh, erase some of this stuff away because it, to me it wasn't looked weird. Um, and then yeah, that's basically like when I get to this point now, it's it's kind of like fun time, and I just go into. Uh, where I see uh, something might need a little bit more um, context or uh, interesting uh, line and uh, shape relation. So, which means this might be a little bit advanced for like uh, beginners, uh, beginning artists. Like you kind of uh, have to learn over time and with practice, like kind of what those mean to you individually and where your taste and uh, your individual like style progresses so in here I'm just I'm searching a little bit because one thing I do know is that um, I don't need to have a line connecting every single thing on this image because your brain is going to naturally fill in those spaces after because it's just a pattern recognition that you have instinctually um, and you know what people and things look like so you don't need everything filled out uh, I don't know it's just um that's a fun positive and negative shapes uh, used in art I guess always kind of um, pardon the pun I've been drawn to uh, I don't yeah there's no I don't have a real answer for that <laughs> And here you can see I'm going into smaller micro shapes that I'm just implying. Uh, probably some sort of more tech. I need to figure out what this hand is doing. I know it's here. And you see me jumping around, like I'm not just working on one shape here. I jump around, I jump up here, and then I'll jump down here. I think I don't have a real legitimate answer for that. I've seen it, like myself do it. Um, in recordings, I, I kind of laugh sometimes when I'm drawing multiple things that I'll be working on something and then I'll see something else and I'll jump over to it even though it's a totally different uh, subject like for instance I, I was doing those helmet sketches before and I saw myself in the recording I didn't know I was doing it. in the recording I, I see myself working on one helmet and then all of a sudden I jumped to the other one because I saw something that needed to be changed or something that I felt needed to be changed and I think it's because I'm I think it's because when I'm drawing it, I'm looking at the whole thing. Like I'm, I'll be down here, but then I'll take an instance and I'll look at the whole thing, which will make me jump over here and put something over here. And I, what I think I'm trying to do is find the balance, uh, 
within the whole uh, subject, but um, I might be just talking shit too because yeah, I don't I don't exactly know uh, the purpose for um, you know constantly like scanning the whole image or whatever. But at the same time, I don't think I need to know that. <laughs> like, I need to keep it fun and not analyze every single thing I do. tell that I'm ignoring this arm because I think I kind of fucked up and so I need to figure out how to fix it um, I don't know why I fucked up I think it's just because uh, I, I thought I was like boom there's the arm but now I do know I didn't okay I'm not gonna call it a fuck up I think I know that I need to get in there and put in the smaller details to make it so it's not just a black form and to be totally honest with you, I'm doing this test and I'm kind of being a little bit lazy as well because I, I'm i kind of forcing myself to do this, um, which is always not very good to get the best results in art. But uh, I was curious to see what the results would be if I tried to talk and explain uh, my way through like one of these drawings. Um, see, now I'm at this point though, like, so I thought if I established, like I said, that structure or whatever that we had here, I thought that might help, what is it, uh, anchor the form that, like the arms and stuff. I, now I'm thinking, I don't know if that's necessary because that arm is kind of weird to even try to fix. Well, actually... No, I think it might work if we give it like a spear or something. Sorry about the burp. That's what you get when you want recordings. It's just some sort of spear gun thing. Now I'm going to So now you see I'm not so I use I'm actually using that value below to do a line drawing to explain this arm better. Um, and so that's what I mean by I don't have an exact like this is exactly what I'm going to do. I kind of go, oh, okay, with my experience and all my practice that I've been putting in, I try to see like to still be kind of free and hopefully pick up on what needs to be done. And now here it's the top of the hand. And just hinting at like where the fingers could be because I, I don't want to get like just jump into all that stuff right now uh, or I just mean like establishing exactly the full anatomy of the hand and everything need a bit more leg here I mean, you shouldn't even really see this leg that much but we'll just put some mass that's sitting there. I'm going to establish more of a knee.
Um, and the reason why I'm making these designs, I like once again, these like structures that I'm putting in this like in here, uh, I think what I'm doing is I'm just trying to look at that shape or the space here. And I'm just trying to figure out what design wise looks proper to me as far as where things are broken up, how big this uh, material is compared to the material on the knee and then the little micro details that are put in. Uh, and like I said, this, this that just comes with practice and you just, uh, you know, developing your own sense of uh, design and style. It's the same as when you see people that you look and you're like, they seem so well dressed and they, you know, they, they, it's like they're wearing the exact same thing as everybody else, but for some reason they can wear it better because they organize the, <laughs> the layering of the shirts to the thing is better. It's almost like that. Cause you do see people that just for some reason you're like, why do they look so much cooler than the guy <laughs> next to him? I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but. That's why I always laugh at rich people who buy all this shit, and I'm just like, I, I'm like, yeah, you can't buy f taste. <laughs> so I'm coming up on like just about a half an hour on sketching this out and so that's where I kind of try to limit myself is to not spend so much time um, just because it's I could continue um, further but then I try to keep these things as like pretty loose ideas and just warming up my hands and my thoughts a little bit and this actually just kind of getting that creative uh, that desire to make something uh, out of the way um, and you know a lot of the time also I want people to know like you know I fail a lot <laughs> um, I like for instance I don't think this is very good I'm not gonna be like oh wow this is so good I need to show everything or everybody I think um, I do it out of just the act of drawing and creating and that's the fun part but then I always try to tell people it's okay like it's like I fail a ton and it's okay to just like you have a crappy drawing one day then you can do another drawing and then you know some of them are going to be bad and some of them are going to be good uh it's just I guess the process of you know how you learn oh I'm going to jump um I press F6 and I put basically a darken layer and I like to do this sometimes which uh I just lower this a bit and I like to make broad strokes which help basically give um a little bit more dynamic uh visual cues to the form uh below it and something that kind of guides your eye or i guess it just brings out more structure And the reason why I put it on a different layer is so if I don't like what I did, I can just erase it away really quick and get something else that's pretty cool. Or I mean, this guy's really generic. <laughs> Dive guy. Yeah, this is almost like a eighties retro. Oh yeah, see this is cool. See right there, that stroke reminded me of uh, something I used to do a lot actually. Um, and it describes a little bit like what that material pattern could look like. And that the way that only came up is because I just made that one stroke and then that cued an idea in my head. So that happens quite a bit. Uh, like I said, just, I guess, trying to um, 
stay loose with your ideas. We could put a little bit of rim light on there. I want to see what this would look like. A counter round shape with all the um, straight lines I've been making. And if he wanted to bend his arm, obviously you, <laughs> you wouldn't want this round shape cutting off. Uh, but for right now, for visual context and like just not worrying about actual function, I'm going to just keep it in there. However, I know you would have to work this out, either the material or something. Uh, you know, you would have to describe this as a more rubber material or something that's adjustable. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, where are we at? Yeah, almost exactly 30 minutes. So I am going to stop here. So I'm just putting the tiny little marks here and there just for some visual cues of uh, micro details. Okay, so there you go. Uh, I hope this helps. It gives you guys some of ideas. Um, sorry, I actually want to try one thing. But I hope this uh, just gives... I've been given a lot of requests to kind of do a talk over. And uh, I hope this just gives a little insight into a little bit of my thought pattern. Uh, this big black shape, I don't want it to be completely black. I just want to make maybe some little things that... Uh, basically draw your eye down to it and then quickly back to uh, the main you know focus which is the dude sitting or I guess his upper body <laughs> this is <laughs> this is why it's hard to talk and draw at the same time you find yourself making mistakes and I'm not much of a linguist anyway so it's a little bit uh, Uh, maybe I'll do this too. This is just me being curious now. I mean, he's on this round boat in the thing, but I think I want to keep it. Yeah. Yeah, see, what I like here is boom, this triangle shape. I think that uh, is cool. And. But I want to make sure my line is quite thin to contrast against the other line that's there. Because the other line is quite it's thick, but I want this one to be like really thin. Yeah, and this is a good opportunity to establish a bit of um.
actually I will. I just don't like this hard edge, I don't think, even though it's the marker thing. Or I, I need to actually work on it structurally to, I guess, make it more cohesive. So I'm just going to lighten that up quite a bit. Um, even though I'm not 100% on it. Hold up, see, now I'm, now I'm getting attached. Oh yeah, and so what I like about these marker brushes that I'm using, the reason why I use them is that I think it gives it the brush stroke rhythm and it it just adds a, a visual variety from this from this to this that just um, I guess some people just like like me uh, even though I'm not pumped about this stuff still I would normally just a heads up I would do this <clears throat> and I would also add now that I've added this shadow here, I want to almost experiment with a counter, uh, if that makes sense. Basically almost like a counter shadow across here, but I don't think I'm going to do that uh, today. Uh, but just to let you know a little bit about my thought pattern on that. And I would possibly do it like this, so you have counter rhythm. Uh, like patterns. Whoops. Oh, yeah, it won't let me do it because I've got the reference. All right, we can get rid of this reference actually. I'm not sure if this is going to work. I, this is a little bit of an experiment. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I'll be honest, like right now I'm a little bit, uh, what's the word? Uh, not exactly confused, but, um, uh, shoot, sorry. Uh, I'm at um, juxtapose. I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't w know if I like this or not. I, basically, I have two opinions. I mean, I don't, I'm trying to think of the right word. Yeah, I don't know. I think I liked it more without this stuff that I tried. But whatever. That's okay. That still looks... It has that traditional look that I really like as well. So, um, okay. Yeah, I hope that helps. Um, go ahead. Feel free. Leave uh, comments or questions and I'll try to get back to them. Cheers. Hey, yeah. Uh... uh I decided to, after the last recording, I stopped and I took a fresh look at this and I decided I wanted to put more love into it and basically more in some more micro details, um, as you can see in the hands here. Uh, you know, just small little um, details and bringing out a little bit more of the form and everything. Uh, so that's why the image will look different. The process, there's nothing special, you know, it's just 
basically I'm putting you know more design elements that I think would be more fitting um, especially I just thought about that because if I do post this on uh, my portfolio or something I just want it to be a little bit more finished uh, I'm going to experiment with um, actually possibly bringing out a little bit more of this uh, form by putting uh, a, this kind of background gradient and see what that does uh, for the image but I'm not sure it's totally gonna work but it's just another experiment that I, I do try to do this as well I don't know if it actually does <clears throat> excuse me I don't know if it actually does that much for the image uh, it makes it different I don't know if it's actually improving it uh, yet but so sometimes another thing I'll do when I'm doing these sketches I will put a time limit of like 30 minutes or something and then I'll take a step away and then I'll come back to it. Either I'll go, you know, for a run or just, you know, do whatever. Um, sometimes I'll just sleep on it and wake up and take a second look. And then see if I want to improve anything. And that's something I do across, you know, any of my sketches or, you know, bigger concepts or illustrations. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I just uh, wanted to check back in to show that, hey, if you, you know, the image is different, it's just because I put a little bit more... Um, thought into it and uh, now it now it looks like he's almost sitting underwater which is funny um, <clears throat> yeah I'm going to leave it as is uh, without that but that's an experiment so okay I hope this helps uh any questions and stuff and feel free to you know leave any comments or whatever cheers <clears throat>